Hi, this is Trent Mera. I'm a systems consultant for database performance with Quest Software. And I want to take a few minutes here to show you how Foglight for MySQL can help you be alerted to blocking situations going on on your MySQL or MariaDB databases and how you can take some actions on those as well. So first of all, let's talk about how you can get an email alert. Uh, any alarms that are going on with blocking will appear in the DB alarms column here. Uh, about mid-screen, uh, but you might also want to get an email uh, for that, so let me show you how that works. Um, first thing to know about is where the thresholds for blocking are defined. So I'm going to check this MySQL connection that I have, and I'm going to go into Configure Alarms. And in a section called Queries here, these are all the different metrics that Foglight from MySQL is collecting and evaluating and then potentially alarming and emailing you about. You'll see in the query section a block transaction alarm generator. And the default behavior here is uh, 15 milliseconds, uh, I'm sorry, 15 seconds of blocking uh, creates an alarm condition at the warning level, which is just the lowest or yellow colored alarm that we have. Um, you could definitely use the other levels as well. The Enhance Alarm button there lets you uh, say, well, I also want the orange critical level. I maybe want to show a red level as well uh, when when I hit, let's say, 30 seconds of blocking or 60 seconds of blocking, respectively there. So you can modify the thresholds that trigger an alarm. Um, but what that doesn't do from this page, what you can't do yet from this page, is you can't specify uh, whether that sends an email alert to you. Uh, that currently, with the fog light for MySQL cartridge, needs to be done over here in administration, uh, in the navigation pane. You want to go to all rules. You want to filter on the MySQL agent here. And you'll see there the block transaction alarm generator. This is really the system of record. The administration rules here is the system of record for all of the, the, the alarm rules that are set up in Foglight. Uh, the other ways that you can get to it, like we just did from the, within the databases homepage, are windows into this. But this is really where you can see uh, everything and, and make all the changes you might want to make. So we can go in and we can view and edit this rule. You can see you can copy it as well. You could make different rules, scope to different connections, things like that. Um, we can see our threshold configurations here, but we'd want to go to the rule editor in the upper right corner here. And that would let us then go into the rule and for a given level, a given threshold level of alarm, say the warning level or critical or fatal, we can set up an action and that could be an email action. Uh, which would email us about the problem. So that's that's the way you get an email notification about blocking. Uh, from there, we can go back to the databases page. Uh, again, you would see any outstanding blocking alarms in the DB alarms column here. Uh, we save off the alarms. You could see historically, you can scroll back through time and, and see when blocking occurred at, at earlier periods. But these would be the current outstanding blocking alarms. Uh, you can click on these alarms and, and go into a particular alarm. I don't have a blocking example here, but we'll give you in the drill down a description of what's happening and, and some details about the system and the time and severity and all of that. Uh, you can acknowledge alarms and clear alarms from here as well. Uh, but really, where you want to then go to is the detail area of Foglight for MySQL to tell you what's happening, what's blocking what. And so that's going to be in the drill down in, in the overview page actually right on the MySQL overview page you'll see a blocking a block transaction link here you can click on it and I don't have any blocking happening right now there's a count uh, next to that link I just clicked on uh, and it says zero there's no current but if there is then you'll see the blocking that's going on right here you'll see the waiting transaction on the left its thread ID user query wait time etc uh, and then the and then the uh, blocking transaction uh, with its thread ID, user query, etc. So you can see what's going on. So that's really the heart of it. Um, get an email alert and then just uh, click down and understand the blocking that way. Now there's some other ways to other other kind of perspectives, other uh, lenses to look at blocking through. And one would be the bigger picture of all statements running and the kind of weights that you're seeing from each of those. So from the overview page for MySQL and 
again, or MariaDB. Um, you could go to the statements drill down here. Uh, that's either through the navigation ribbon up at the top, or uh, as always with fog light, or almost always with fog light, you can click on the, the links uh, in the middle of the dashboard as well. Here we can see our statements. Uh, we're currently looking at a 60 minute view. If you look up at the time navigator up here, uh, we've got a 60 minute view of of activity on the system and you can change that and look at a four hour view or one week view or a 10 minute view or what have you. Um, and we can order that by different things. We're looking at some wait time, a summation of wait times for all, all executions during this time period. But uh, what we want to look to here with regard to locking is is down here in the table at the bottom of the screen you've got a lock timing average lock and some lock okay we've got a count of how many times a given query has fired in the time range that you're looking at and so of course you can look at the average for each of those uh, average lock timings um, average lock times for each of those executions or you can look at a sum for all executions and so here for example we can see this one had a a 31.2 millisecond lock time for all executions. Uh, so that's that's uh, a, can give you a little bit bigger picture on locking. And of course, these columns are all sortable. So if you wanted to to click on this and and you know look at a table that had the the highest uh, sum lock, you could order descending here and and quickly be able to see uh, where the activity is. Um, you can also look at locking and blocking. Uh, well, I should say locking, not necessarily blocking. It, it, locking doesn't always mean blocking, but you can see locking from the table perspective. Uh, you'll see this right-hand column here. You've got locks. Again, you can specify a time range, and then you can go and, and discover uh, which tables had locks on them uh, and what the count is uh, for the period of time you're looking at. Um, lastly, you know we've discussed getting information about locking and blocking uh, in Foglight from MySQL, but not anything about taking an action on that. Um, if you have the right permissions in Foglight from MySQL, you can take an action. You can kill a query, kill a process. Um, the way that works is you have to go back to the agent status screen back in administration, and you can configure the MySQL agent uh, to give you this administrative link, administration link. Uh, in the upper right hand corner of your overview page and when if you have that uh, if you're the user that has permission to 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 do this then um, you can go in here and you can see you've got options to handle connections you can uh, optimize repair flush drop tables you can uh, uh, flush query caches get exchange uh, explain plans etc but this is the one that would really be relevant to blocking uh, is that you could go in here and you could kill a connection or you could kill a query. Okay, so you could select it here. This is this is just showing my current executing queries. I don't currently have any blocking, but uh, you would see all the different. You'd want to identify the the ID um, from the earlier screens we looked at to just make sure that you're killing the right query, and then you'd want to click perform operation and you could kill that query and clear the blocking. Uh, so that's it for just a quick look at handling locking and blocking uh, within Foglight for MySQL. Uh, please look around uh, the site for additional uh, little video clips showing you specific use cases of Foglight for MySQL and all the other platforms that we use. And uh, please do feel free to reach out and contact us with questions or if you need to do an evaluation on the tool or uh, have any help at all. Thank you very much for your time. Bye.